What's up guys, Nolan here. Doing a bit of a follow-up on the video I put up the other day about where to start when you're first getting into Star Citizen. And once you get into game and once you get some money, you're probably going to be wanting to figure out what should I do next? What ship should I get next if I already have the ships that you're already talking about? If I want to start playing with friends, what should I start looking into possibly either IRL investing into or in-game investing into, saving up for, things like that. First things first, I would at all costs not spend money on this game just period if you can't seem to help it like if it just seems like your if it's your thing if it's your game you want to put some money into it you want to help with the development on that side of things you're more than welcome to personally i don't see the point in or i don't see the value in the ships that you're currently buying because we don't have access to the bigger stuff so personally if i was just getting into the game right now i would have a couple of ships or even a couple of hulls that are lifetime insurance that i can upgrade later into potentially something bigger if i wanted to then the stuff that i just kind of think i might like right now keep meltable which is pretty much what i'm doing i have two shrikes i have a retaliator and a sentinel that is meltable i think and my lightning's meltable as well but i'm not gonna let I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna be melted that as somebody that's been supporting the game for years most of my fleet is not meltable i can only upgrade it so if i'm not trying to spend money which i'm not trying to spend money right now it leaves me with very few options so if you are enjoying the game if you know you're going to get into it all of the ships that i talk about here can be bought out of game especially around fleet week and definitely especially around iae later this year most of them can be purchased in game i'll, I'll point out which is which as i go along first things first if you started with an aurora or however you started off with that's fine but i figured i might as well mention it the cutter i think is starting to take the trophy for best starter ship in my mind right now because of the flexibility of it and after thinking about it some more what what is really your goal when you first get into the game because for me especially if you're playing solo it's to make money you're going to want to make money so that you can upgrade your ship or buy a new one i think the cutter puts you in the most efficient slot for that at that price point so depending on whatever sales might be going on which while we're on the subject i might as well check right now yeah we got the cutter for 51 and this is in terms of a game package because you got to make sure you get the game package so you can actually play i would say if you've got the extra six bucks plus tax you go for the cutter however if you have friends in game already like i mentioned in the first video just get something that can get you in game just do the 45 dollars you'll be all good hopefully that made sense now the next step would be whether you get this in game or not would be something like a cutty black or a spirit c1 this is the same concept except just more you're going to be able to carry more you're going to have a bit more firepower well actually significantly more firepower what you were doing before but more whether it be cargo running whether you were renting something for salvage whether you were salvaging or mining by hand and you need something that you need some place to put it just continue what you were doing with the cutter but now you can just do more of it and then beyond that we've got the vulture and the prospector right now now as in pre 323 salvage is insane risky salvage is just millions of auc it is easily the best way to make money while jump town is going on and if it would spawn for you it's only going to be going for another few days here but still while jump town is going on and you turn those packages into a friendly or the lawful side of the turn in for those quests that's twenty thousand per package i was on my alt which has a c1 the other day and it was completely broke i had like five grand jumped down to jt in my c1 and i grabbed four or five packages or whatever it was i think it was it was no more than you know several and i was rolling in it i had plenty of money to do whatever i really wanted to from that point in terms of renting in terms of gear if you are solo and you get lucky jt is a bit insane but for everybody else it's risky salvage at least before 323 it is risky salvage now post 323 we're gonna have to see how they balance it. We know they're gonna be balancing the salvage missions. They're still obviously gonna be available. There's gonna be profit to be made, but we'll see what exactly that looks like. So there is some potential for it to be taken over by mining or cargo running or something else. So if you go through this system where you go from, you start with the cutter, you get a cutty black or a C1, and then you get a vulture. At least you know there's something you're gonna be able to do with salvage, but maybe salvage still ends up being very profitable. And then with that, you can end up buying a, buying a prospector and you can go that route if you want to. Then from there, you can start working on your military ships. However, something to think about too is that if you are solo, that's how that should work. But if you have friends to join, you might wanna go straight into the combat side of things because if you don't know how to fight, you're not really gonna know how to survive, especially with pyro coming up and just with, you know, 
the way the game works i would suggest that you get good at fighting or at least as good as you possibly can at fighting so that you can at least understand how to survive so that's where we start bringing up in terms of my opinion here the best ships in the game for combat now it is in a very rough spot right now for multi-crew ships some of you guys might be thinking maybe this is the year that you do want to upgrade to possibly a hammerhead or an a2 or maybe you're just money bags and you just want to go straight to it or maybe you and a bunch of your friends want to get together and and uh get together and, and get one of these ships or pull in to get one of these ships for the group i will tell you right now after some significant testing both the a2 and the hammerhead are in a very rough spot before 323 because there's a lot of single seat fighters that outrange it post 323 there's some significant turret issues about the speed at which those turrets turn the cone of fire for those turrets not being able to hit smaller targets and they're still again the range at which you can hit those targets even though they will be improving those size cannon the the range at which you can hit targets with the, the size cannons and the repeaters and whatnot that you could put on these. It is a very sketchy future for turrets in general for 323 until they end up fixing that stuff. Generally speaking, the TLDR there though that we've found is it's much more efficient to have somebody in another fighter than it would be to have somebody in a turret of these larger ships. So I'll leave that one up to you, but that one's kind of out of the, uh, that was kind of out of the picture for me at least. Hopefully they can end up fixing the turrets by IAE at the end of the year. And then maybe I'll start pushing that way. And, and for me personally, I've got a bunch of these ships already. The org's got a bunch of these ships. I'm not too worried about it right now in terms of what you guys are looking at, what you guys might want to upgrade to. Personally, I would stay away from the hammerheads. I'd stay away from the A2s. We'll see if the Perseus ends up popping into the game. The Polaris should be this year. It really shouldn't be what you're thinking about right now. It should just be learning how to play the game and what ships will allow you to learn how to play the game. On the combat side of things, this is what we're looking at, in my opinion. The lightning sticks out above all the rest. So if you're looking to put some money down and you still have a golden ticket, assuming that still works, I still have a golden ticket in my inventory, assuming that during fleet week, assuming during IAE, assuming at some other point they're going to start being able to get the lightning back to people or allow people to get the lightning again. If you have, if you are in a position to purchase a lightning because you can only purchase it out of game, it's around $300, do it. That sticks out above all the rest. Now it's not lost on me that that is a lot of money. So what are your alternatives? That's what we're going to be talking about right now. The next alternative is the Hornet Mark II. It's much more maneuverable than the lightning. Depending on the pilot, Hornet Mark IIs can beat lightning. However, that's also something that you have to purchase outside of the game. And that's going to be the $150 plus mark, depending on which one you get. Next step would be the Mark I Hornets. In particular, the Hornet Ghost sticks out above all the rest because you can get approximately, if not the exact same weapon loadout as the other Hornets, and the stealthiness of the Ghost is significant. We have a lot of people that are turning over to Ghosts right now. However, they are not doing them outside of game. They are only purchasing them inside of the game because you can get them pretty cheap compared to everything else. And you don't actually have to spend IRL money on it. You can buy it in game. So if you want, in my opinion the best single seat fighter and you're able to drop $300 it's a no-brainer you need to get the lightning if you're able to drop a couple hundred dollars you should be doing the mark ii and you should be doing the questing game in order to get the uh, f7a mark ii and if you don't want to spend any irl money or less irl money up to you hornet ghost that's the play I'm not saying any of the other single seat fighters are trash I'm not saying they can't win a fight I'm not saying that it's a bad thing to like them it's completely up to you guys. I'm just saying in my opinion, and based off the testing that we've had over the last several weeks, actually months, in the current state of the game, and for what we see coming up in 323 for Master Modes, this is my opinion. Now, honorable mention there for Master Modes is the Buccaneer. I personally, as this is a video about my opinion on these things, don't like the view out of the Buccaneer. However, Interceptors, as the Buccaneer is set up to be, or designated to be an Interceptor, are very, very good in master modes right now because when you switch them to nav mode, they can fly away much quicker than all of the other ships, giving you the ability to disengage much faster than any other ships, get your shields back, come back, potentially, if you're a very good pilot, before your opponent gets their shields back and then allows you to win fights. Buccaneers are absolutely at the top of the food chain right now for master modes, but that could change. And it likely will. We'll see what it ends up changing to, but again, honorable mention there, Buccaneers are doing very well in master modes in the current stage of testing. On the good side of that, you can buy those in game too. So I'm not too worried about them. If they end up do staying at the top of the food chain, I'll buy one in game. 
Next up, we have the Ares series, which me in particular, I've been going for the Ion. Now, insert the uh, Jeremy Clarkson meme here where this is great, but I like this. It's the exact opposite for me. The, the Ion is great. I like the Inferno, but I don't own the Inferno because it's just 250 bucks, one haul there. I just buy the Ion because the Ion is very good between the missile loadout, the status of with it being a heavy fighter, it can take a beating and that size seven laser cannon that you're not gonna run out of ammunition for is quite useful. I just, I like the Inferno, so I'm going to own Infernos for sure. It just sucks that you run out of ammunition. That's the only thing. In general though, again, like I was mentioning that size seven cannon that when you do land your shots, it really packs a punch and the missile loadout is huge on the ion. You get a ton of size threes, potentially two size fives, which if you hit a hammerhead or a larger ship with that, that will do significant damage. You can get like four size fours and then the numbers keep going up from there. You get a bunch more size threes if you want, ton of size twos if you want, and then just a ton of size ones if you want to do that as well. So the missile loadout on the ion is intense. We use those as sort of outside of the fight kind of deal. Use up your missiles, get them to run out of flare, see if you can pop a couple kills, see if you get them to See if you can get them to, to uh, maneuver in insufficient ways when they're trying to dogfight other teammates, things like that, and then go in and try and snipe with the cannon if you can. It's an all around solid support fighting ship right now. Then we're gonna do a honorable mention with the Talon Shrike. It is very stealthy and the weapons that it has is very small. They only have two size twos, I believe, but you get 24 size three missiles in that package, in that small stealthy package. So it's quite nice to have as again, a support ship, especially where it's stealthy, unless you know, you see the missiles coming at you. It's actually quite difficult to find the Shrike. So honorable mention there as a support ship with the missile spam on that side of things, also something that you can purchase in game right now. Now that handles the single seater side of things. And again, want to really nail this down. This is my opinion on this side of stuff. And this is based off of testing with the org. So I'm not saying that if you guys like other ships, you're wrong. I'm not saying it's bad to like the other ships. This is again, just my opinion. Now, when it comes to two seaters, kind of different setup here. We've got the Scorpius and the Hurricane. There's a pretty big wall between people that like the Scorpius and people that like the Hurricane. The people that like the Scorpius seem to know that it's better. The people that like the Hurricane seem to know that the Hurricane is better and there's not really too much in between. However, whenever I fight a Scorpius, it seems like I always see uh, at least one or two of the wings popping off before it, you know, it starts to really go downhill from there. So I'm starting to lean a bit more towards Hurricane, but then at the same time, it's not as maneuverable. It, it really is a toss up. I personally own two Scorpius, but at some point in the future, I will be upgrading those. When it comes down to two seaters, if you're close to a Hurricane, maybe grab a Hurricane. If you're close to a Scorpius, maybe grab a Scorpius. Both can be bought in game, but they are very powerful in the, the fact that you have a pilot that has its own set of guns and a gunner that has its own set of guns. And these are both heavy fighters, so they can take a beating. Now, when it comes down to pilots, I would absolutely for a fact, rather have two Lightning than one Scorpius or one Hurricane. And I would absolutely have four Lightning instead of two Scorpius or two Hurricane or one Scorpius, one Hurricane. That's just how it comes out to. The argument that can be made is, would you rather have two Ghost or two Hornet Mark IIs than one Scorpion or one Hurricane? That argument can be had depending on the pilots. It's gonna come down to the pilots. It's gonna come down to the gunner landing shots, stuff like that. But if you have two Lightning, I'd rather have two lightning than one hurricane or one uh, Scorpius. That's when it comes down to, in my opinion. And uh, that's an absolute fact for the Sentinel as well. But the, the Sentinel needs to be part of this conversation because of the EMPs. The EMPs are very powerful in 323. I mean, they're very powerful right now and they're gonna be even more powerful in 323. When it comes to light fighters, one EMP will knock its shields out. A second EMP will shut that ship down and apparently this seems like this might change as well it seems like really powerful that is planned to be the case for 323 or at some point in the future one emp to shut down shields one emp to shut the ship down for heavy fighters so we'll have to see the extent of that we've done minimal testing on our end because we've ran into some bad servers when we've tried to test it because of jump town going on and also the xeno threat thing going on hasn't been that effective but we have noticed it completely even one shotting in terms of knocking out arrows before and it's not like it doesn't work it absolutely does work if you hit a ship that has its shield down a single c fighter or a heavy fighter if its shields are down and you hit it with an emp it's gonna knock it out it's 
extremely effective. You, that ship's not going anywhere for, I mean, a few dozen seconds, 30 seconds. It might even be a couple minutes for some of these. It is very powerful, but you absolutely need a gunner. So that's two people. And you really do need a second ship for support, whether it be a light fighter or another heavy fighter. It needs support it is a support ship it can't stand on its own it's not going to be able to win fights against lightning hornets scorpius any of that stuff so you do need to pair it up with something else and it does need to get close in order to use those emps but they do pack a punch and they do really win fights when you do get hits with them gonna need some more further testing on that but that's worth a mention there on that one. And that's really everything when it comes down to what to do next and what ships you should be thinking about. This is all, again, my opinion. Got to say it for the last time here. Doesn't mean that there's other the other ships that, especially if you let, end up liking those ships, go ahead and fly those ships. There's nothing wrong with that. It's fine. This is based off my opinion. I'm hoping that it helps some people if you're trying to figure out around Fleet Week this, uh, this coming month or sail into the future or what you should be buying in game. Hopefully this helps out. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Otherwise, you know the drill. Follow me on Twitter for the latest stuff. If you're interested in joining the org, check that out right here. Subscribe for more. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you have a nice day in the verse. See you guys.